amid the medieval churches and castles in the ancient city of Ferrara in northern Italy is a doctor, Paolo Zamboni, who's developed an amazing theory that could turn the diagnosis and treatment of multiple sclerosis upside down. I am fully convinced that it is very, very important for people. But it was when his wife, Elena, began developing the symptoms of MS over a decade ago that he began a new and very personal medical mission. She was having serious attacks where she lost her sight and couldn't walk. So did you see her spiraling yes, down? Yes, yes. My hope was to find something that uh, might be operated for her. Doctors have long considered MS an autoimmune disorder where immune cells attack the nerves and brain. One of the hallmarks of the disease are these white spots that appear on brain scans, signs of active disease. But no one has ever conclusively proven exactly what starts it all. For over a century, scientists have been finding unusually high levels of iron in the brains of patients with MS. Most assumed it was simply a byproduct of the immune disorder. But for Dr. Zamboni, it was a clue to something much more important. For me, it was really unbelievable. It's to understand that iron deposit is in multiple sclerosis in exactly around the veins. So probably is a product of a dysfunction of drainage of the vein. This is very important new because iron is very dangerous. Dangerous because iron in the brain can cause cell death, inflammation, and immune problems. So using ultrasound, he began to scan the head and necks of MS patients, and that's when he made a key discovery. In some uh, patients, I found the evidence of narrowing, narrowing of the vein. In the neck? Yes. So the blood was not draining? And this is in an MS patient? Yes, just in MS patients. In patient after patient, he found the same thing, narrowed veins. So in normal people or people with other diseases? With other disease, neurological or not. No narrowing? No narrowing. So every single one yes. of the MS patients had some sort of narrowing in the drainage? Yes. It was a brand new condition, something he called CCSVI chronic cerebral spinal venous insufficiency. He found blockages either in the two jugular veins or in a large central vein that sits in the chest, problems that he says likely take root before birth. And when they're narrowed or blocked, blood backs up into the brain, and that, he says, could be pushing blood which contains iron into the brain tissue of these patients. The bottom line, Dr. Zamboni had uncovered a structural defect common in MS patients that could be a possible trigger for multiple sclerosis. Did you say, this is it? Did you jump up and down? Did you say, yes, this is it? This, this is, something this is a very seen? important factor, I thought, and also that this factor can be treated. Were you excited? Absolutely excited. The first things that I did was uh, to present my imaging to neurologist and uh, at the beginning they were really interested but when I anticipated the possibility to treat this associated condition oh they were not so excited like me <laughs> Dr. Zamboni says many neurologists he approached declined to join his research that could be because it's a complete reversal of conventional science that says MS is a brain disorder and an autoimmune disease. But there was one neurologist who was captivated by the theory. Dr. Fabrizio Salvi likes ideas that are out of the box. And so he began sending his MS patients to Dr. Zamboni for testing. The images of narrowed or blocked veins, called strictures, were irrefutable. Everyone can see what we found. Everyone, everyone can see the strictures. And one patient he sent was Augusto Zeppi. 
Augusto had been suffering regular MS attacks for nine long years, which left him with incredible fatigue and difficulty walking. E tutto quello che stavo sognando per la mia vita adulta uh, non sarebbe mai più potuto yeah, you, essere. You thought your life was over. Finito. Finito. Game over. <laughs> Game over. When he was scanned, both of his jugular veins were 60 and 80 percent blocked. And so he became one of the first to undergo an experimental procedure to unblock those veins. It's a treatment that he says has restored him to health. Mi sono dimenticato di essere stato malato. Really? You don't remember what it's like to have MS? Sto bene. Sto bene come stavo 15 anni fa, prima di ammalarmi. C'è stato un momento in cui io pensavo di non poter giocare a tennis con mio figlio. Poterlo fare. You can play tennis with your son now? Cioè, um, he gave you back your life. Ti ha dato la vita. Mi ha ridato una seconda vita, sicuramente. And you're about to see something never shown before on television. It's an experimental treatment to open up the blocked veins that Dr. Paolo Zamboni and his team have been finding in patients with multiple sclerosis. So you decided to move ahead with the treatment now that you had made the diagnosis, right? Yes. Treatment of a narrowing could be a good way for eliminating iron deposition, so dangerous iron stores in the brain. And MS patients like this young woman are lining up for his research studies. For years, doctors have used tiny balloons to open up blocked arteries. It's a procedure called angioplasty. Dr. Zamboni decided to try a similar treatment in patients with MS who have blocked veins. Dr. Robert Galeotti, an interventional radiologist, threads a wire through the key veins that drain blood from the brain. Like most MS patients they've studied, she has two blocked jugular veins in her neck. You can see one on the scan. Look at, at this section and look at this. A narrowing. A narrowing. Yes. It's a significant stenosis because it's certainly more than 50 percent. <laughs> Doctors then send in a small balloon and inflate it. Once the balloon is removed, Doctors watch as the blood begins to flow down normally from the brain. Uh, wow! Well, no more narrowing. The blood goes faster than before. Dr. Zamboni's team has performed this surgery on 120 patients so far, some while the patients were having severe MS attacks, with dramatic results. Sometimes it was unbelievable because they told us now I have a normal sensation. I have a sensation of my hands. I have a sensation of my legs again. That's fantastic. The doctors called it the liberation procedure, la liberazione, the Italian word for freedom, as the operation restored normal blood flow from the brain. For the patients, however, this liberation had an even more profound meaning. Here is research video taken by Dr. Zamboni's team. It shows an MS patient before the procedure. His right leg is weak and shakes. This is the same man two weeks after a liberation treatment. Another patient who drags his right leg before the treatment. A month and a half after the liberation, he has a steadier gait. Sala Rampi was diagnosed in 2003. She had two blocked veins that were open two years ago. In una decina di giorni ho recuperato completamente tutta la forza nella gamba. In an upcoming study of 65 patients with the most common form of MS, many saw a drop in the number of new brain lesions. And in the nearly two years following the surgery, 73% of patients had no more MS attacks. In the first two years after the procedure, if you maintain no narrowing, in your neck veins or chest veins, you do not have more attack. And you do not have more active lesion at MRI. 
Maybe it's a placebo effect. Patients can be very enthusiastic in the first month, the first day after the liberation procedure. I think this can be certainly taken into account, but after two years. The first neurologist to support Dr. Zamboni's work was Fabrizio Salvi. But you don't think it's a cure? I, I, <laughs> I think that may be the cure for MS, but I have to be careful. Most in the medical community haven't yet heard about what's going on in Ferrara, Italy. But among MS patients, Dr. Zamboni's work is the hottest topic on internet chat sites. But scientists elsewhere won't embrace this radical new approach until they do their own studies. So researchers at the University of Buffalo actually invited Dr. Zamboni and a group of his liberated Italian patients to collaborate on the largest study of its kind. The Buffalo team, headed by Dr. Robert Zavadinov, is now looking for over 1,000 MS patients from the U.S. and from Canada to scan their necks with ultrasounds and MRIs to find the twisted veins that may be at the root of MS. The first step is prove that this is true and that it's more prevalent in MS patients than normal controls, which I can tell you immediately I believe it is. But MS societies in Canada and the U.S. have issued cautious statements, saying there's insufficient evidence to suggest that this phenomenon is the cause of MS, and they discourage patients from getting tested or seeking treatment. But Dr. Zamboni insists his study results will eventually win over skeptics in the scientific world. The opposition was really big, but uh, this was never important for me because... Uh, uh, what uh, uh, I did was to continue to accumulate evidence, evidence, evidence. And he has important allies here at McMaster University in Hamilton. Mark Hakey, a Canadian who also works at Wayne State University in Detroit, says he too is finding surprising narrowed veins in MS patients from around the world. And this is the drainage. That's the main draining vein, and then it gets very narrow, almost like a little hair running down here. That's bad. And you saw that and you thought what? I thought Zamboni is on the right track. I was very excited by this because I felt that our finding made sense. I think this is quite a paradigm shift. And so he's setting up his own scientific study encouraging MS patients to send him MRI scans of their heads and necks so he can build on Dr. Zamboni's findings. The patients need to speak up and say, we want to have something like this investigated, at least at an early stage, to see if there is credence to this theory. Even if it's 10 or 20 percent of these people who can be helped, that needs to be investigated. But the scientific world moves slowly, and Dr. Samboni's research suggests the earlier patients are treated, the better the result. MS is a progressive disease and strikes young people. So if we lose time, there are a lot of young people that progresses without possibility to get back. And this is very heavy for me, really. But for Dr. Zamboni, this has always been more than a scientific quest. It's a journey fueled by love. His wife, Elena, developed MS over a decade ago, and she was one of his team's first test subjects. Immediately. <laughs> I tested my wife immediately. And? And I found the narrowing. Elena was also one of the first patients who was liberated from those blocked veins nearly three years ago. An intensely private woman, she chose not to speak on camera, but told us she's not had an MS attack since. In the MRI, we do not have actually uh, disease activity at all. And uh, she returned to completely to their activity. She's normal? Yes. If you perform a neurological examination, you are not too capable to find neurological deficit.